Hello, uh, my name is Paul Scohan. and I'm a research professor here in the School of Earth and Space Exploration. Uh, I'm an astronomer by original training and uh, I subsequently got into uh, a fair amount of engineering and instruments and optomechanical design to be able uh, to build instruments that allowed me to do some of the science that I wanted to do because those instruments weren't in existence yet. Um, so what I'm gonna do is lead you around a bit uh, here in my uh, lab spaces to give you some feeling for how we do what we do and what's involved with it and uh, hopefully that will give you some information about uh, what we try to do. So this is um, the outer part of my lab. This uh, opens up onto the, uh, the main atrium in ISTB4. This is on the sixth floor and this space I share with Professor J.D. Das um, this is a space that is multi-use. Um, we use this for a variety of different things. Uh, we do soldering and electronics, design and assembly over in this space here. Um, we use uh, this computer over here to do opti optical and thermal design and indeed mechanical design using environments like SolidWorks, NX and Thermal Desktop. Uh, this approach of using uh, essentially a CAD type environment allows us to head off an awful lot of mistakes and analysis that uh, you might uh, imagine doing in the, in the real world, in the physical world, but we can make mistakes this way and not uh, incur a bunch of uh, cost and uh, time penalties as, as a result. Uh, we have a bunch of uh, power supplies here, so on this desktop here uh, we will actually uh, from time to time build prototype electrical systems and uh, figure out how to put them together and test them on the far side there you'll see two chambers on the desk these are actually ovens that allow us to bake out hardware uh, to get rid of volatile um, molecular contaminants uh, before we put them into a vacuum environment and uh, that's very necessary for some of the work we do uh, in the far ultraviolet, uh, but it is also useful for projects that have to fly to high altitude on balloons or also be hardware potentially that could go to another planet because there's very stringent rules about uh, introducing very clean hardware to planetary environments that uh, humans have not been to before. Uh, that's called the planetary protection uh, protocols. In this back room over here, uh, this is a, uh, an optical room, an optical lab, because you'll notice there are no uh, windows on the walls. And that's so we can send this room completely dark to be able to do testing of optical systems, detectors, mirrors, filters, dichroics, that kind of thing, where the only photons that we're measuring are the ones that we care about. Uh, this big black chamber over here is uh, an additionally light tight system um, and on uh, and underneath it there is an optical bench so we can keep it very isolated and very stable. Uh, this is another optical bench which has a vibration isolation system on it. Uh, we need that because we found when we did some measurements a few years ago that uh, we are actually sensitive to the vibrations of the elevators as they buzz past about 20 yards away from us. Uh, so we need to do that for particularly uh, sensitive measurements. Uh, this, this equipment that's on the uh, bench right now, uh, one of my graduate students is setting up an optical system. Uh, that thing in the middle there is a monochromator, a device that kicks out a very particular wavelength of light. Uh, so it allows you to calibrate responsive systems as a function of wavelength. A lot of what you'll see in this room um, looks very messy. Uh, lots of boxes and stuff. And that's because we're in the process of preparing um, hardware to go into a clean room downstairs, which I'll show you momentarily. Um, this uh, large thing here under the plastic, this is actually a vacuum chamber, uh, which will allow us to uh, simulate um, some of the experience, the conditions on orbit uh, for a small class of spacecraft called a CubeSat. And uh, this particular chamber has been specced out to meet the contamination needs of the far ultraviolet. And we'll be bolting various things onto this chamber. 
That uh, thing over there is the vacuum pump that we'll be using to take it down to vacuum. We'll be adding another monochromator, a far ultraviolet monochromator, onto the side here. And uh, there'll be other devices like heaters and cooling circuits that will allow us to raise the interior temperature or take it down, as well as introducing uh, pieces of hardware that will allow us to monitor the contamination environment inside the chamber while we're doing this. And a lot of the hardware that's going to be done or added as part of this is all what you're seeing in all the boxes on the shelves right now. But that's, this is the, the, the work floor, if you like, for our optomechanical endeavors. Um, sometimes we build hardware to go on telescopes in southern Arizona. Sometimes we build hardware like we'll be doing in this chamber, ultimately to go to either very high altitude on balloon payloads. Uh, that's what that thing, that red chamber over in the corner there is. That's actually a, uh, a system that we used uh, a um, a series of motor-driven systems called hexapods to vibrationally isolate the focal plane in a system. So this can be bolted onto a high-altitude balloon payload um, and it will actually take out all of the jitter and wiggle from riding on the gondola on the balloon payload and leave you with a rock-solid image. So that's uh, a system that we developed a few years ago. Uh, one of my graduate students was the lead on that. But that's really what we do in here. Um, so now let me take you down and show you what the, uh, the clean room space is that we're, we're preparing for this particular hardware and other stuff to go with it to prepare for this Sparks project. So here we are in the basement and uh, in this room over here uh, is the clean room space that we're preparing um, for all of that hardware for Sparks. Uh, to be installed and this will be our operational environment that we build the payload for the spacecraft as well as the spacecraft itself in those environments that I showed you upstairs and here's a poster showing us that this is in fact what this space is for. Access to the, uh, the room is through these vestibules. So this is, it's, it's a clean room space, so we have to gown up here um, to uh, make sure that we are keeping all of the particles and hairs and all the stuff that uh, comes from being a, uh, an imperfect being like a human and not introducing it to the environment uh, within uh, this room. So here is the space over here that we're in the process of cleaning and that hardware that I showed you upstairs will be, uh, once it is clean, brought into this room and put down at the far end of the room there. You see the hole in the wall, that's where the control cables will go into the next room so we don't have to be in the clean room to actually run the hardware. Uh, that's uh, a good thing uh, because gowning up and, get, and gowning down can get real old real fast. There are some things you have to go into the lab to do, uh, but that's what we will be uh, doing only on an as needed basis. So this is what we're gonna be working on and we've got two graduate students working on this right now. A third has just joined us um, and will be part of this endeavor as well. Uh, but this is part of the endeavor, part of the uh, planning and design and execution of hardware ultimately to go to space, albeit in a somewhat small form factor. The uh, 6U CubeSat for Sparks is only 10 by 20 by 30 centimeters in size, and that's why the chamber you saw upstairs um, is the size it is. Uh, but this will allow us to do all of the testing necessary for us to demonstrate to NASA that the hardware is clean enough, it works, and it is good to go into space to do its mission. And so this is, this is part of what we're gonna be working on uh, certainly in the next uh, uh, six to nine months and uh, beyond that uh, the, the endeavor gets a little more complicated but this is, this is what we're embarked upon right now.